conservation of momentum, and then you have conservation of energy. Okay, those two equations that we discussed. Okay, now what we're going to do is combine the two together, and it's actually it's, it's um, really quite nice. Two particles of mass m1 and m2. Okay, they're moving in the same direction. They collide with each other, but they keep on moving in the same direction. So we can assume that when they collide, m2, the mass of m2 is smaller than m1. Um, they didn't make any assumptions right now. What's the total momentum after the collision? From conservation of momentum, so they write down the momentum conservation law, and one thing about exactly what we wrote down before. From conservation of energy, they write down exactly what we said. How many unknowns do we have in this? Assuming the mass is just um, m1 and m2 are not known, but they're just constants, okay? They're, they're not the dynamic things that we want to figure out. Assuming that we know m1 and m2. How many unknowns are there? Two. Two unknowns. Why two? Okay, but also v1 prime and v2 prime are also unknown. Okay? But basically, one of those will be given. In other words, usually you'll know either the initial speeds or the final speeds. All right? So you'll have two unknowns. Now you can, know, you can know maybe the initial speed of one and the final speed of the other. But there'll always be two unknowns and you have two equations, so you can solve for two unknowns. Yep. Okay, so if we know the masses and initial velocities, we can solve these two equations for the velocities after the collision to find V1 prime and V2 prime. Okay, a billiard ball of mass M moving with speed V collides head on. What are the speeds of the two balls after the collision? And we're going to assume that we don't have to worry about it. It's not hitting at an angle or something like that. You're hitting it straight on. In billiard, right, you're, you're taking one, you hit it. One is stationary, and it's being hit by this one. What? So one is has an initial of zero. One has an initial velocity of whatever it's speed. It's known in the experiment. We want to know what the final one is. But after the collision, they're both moving. Right? Then obviously this one will move in the same direction. So we don't what's the total momentum of the system initially? It's the initial momentum of this one plus that one. How much is the momentum of the stationary one? Zero. 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 What's the momentum of this one? M1, V1. Okay, so the total momentum on the left-hand side is MV. Or V1, we're just calling it V. What's the total momentum after the collision? M1, V1 prime. M1, V1 prime. Plus M2V2 prime. M2V2 prime. Okay, so that's right over here. In billiards, the masses are the same. We can't always assume that two equal masses. But in this particular case, the masses are the same. Those are both billiard balls, so what can we do with that equation? We can cancel M. So you just get.
Now in terms of energy, initial energy of the first one that stay, of the one that's stationary is zero. Okay, so we have one half m v uh, one before it's moving, so it's v one without the prime, and it's one half m v one squared. That's the one that had this momentum. All right, and that's equal to you follow everybody. The initial energy, the initial momentum was m one v one. We cancel the m. The initial kinetic energy is one half m one v one squared. What's the final kinetic energy of the whole thing? They're both moving, so it'll be a half m v one prime squared plus a half m v two prime squared. Okay, is that clear? Yeah. Just simple. We can cancel out m. And we can cancel out m again for this equation. And we can cancel out the half. Right? We cancel out a half an m on all of these. Okay, so we cancel out the half m and the half m and the half m. So we have v1 is equal to v1 prime plus v2 prime, and v1 square is equal to v1 prime square plus v2 prime square. I'll just write it closer. So basically, this is equal to this plus this. This square is equal to this square plus that square. Now look at those two equations and tell me whether that makes sense. Square, V1 square. Right, thank you. Can this both be true, these two? No. Why not? We, we Zero, ten, ten, ten. Okay, why, why can this not be true? Because some, uh, something plus something is, and then you square it, it's just not true. Two is equal to one plus one, so that's two. Okay, this squared would be uh, would be four. This is one square and one square is still two. Right. So both of them one. Okay. If this is if this is one plus one, then this is two. Then two squared is equal to one square plus one square. You get four is equal to two. We're saying that this is equal to this, and the square of this thing is equal to this. Now, if you square this, what do you get? We're missing one term, two v1 prime. Right, if you square this, what will you get? You get v1 square plus v2 square plus two v1 v2. Right? Is that correct? Yeah. yeah. So we get v1 square equals v1 prime square plus v2 prime square plus twice v1 v2 prime. Okay? So it's absurd to say that this is equal to just this piece, which is what we're saying here. When is the only time that it could be true? When is this equation true, that it's equal to just this piece? If we'll add to If, when will, when will this be just this, rather than with this piece? If you want or when do it be zero? One of these, this thing has to be zero. When is that zero? Either V1 or V2 or both are zero. Now, in this example, if V1 and V2 are zero, what does that mean? There's no motion. Nothing's moving. Okay, so that's crazy. So in other words, one of V1 or V2 has to be stationary after the collision. One of them is stationary before the collision, and one of them is stationary after the collision. Right? Okay? So that directly comes out of these two. Okay. Now, so what we have is, this is stationary, this hits it. After it hits, one of them will be stationary. Which do you think will be stationary? The one that hits. Which one? The one that hit the... The one that hit it? Yeah. What would happen if this one was stationary? And it hits, 
and it remains stationary. What does that mean? This one must have bounced back. But that's crazy also. I mean, how could a stationary thing, this hits it, it stays stationary and it bounces back? I mean, it's nonsense. I mean, in our world, in our universe, we know that it's nonsense. It can't be, right? It can't hit a stationary object, a wall maybe, but not an equal mass. It hits an equal mass and bounces back, right? Clearly, if one of them is stationary, it has to be that this one is stationary. Okay, in the end, you'll see from the, the signs what happens. So what do you have? This hits, and this one stops. Ooh. That's like a very beautiful result. And how did you get that result? Just from these two equations of conservation of momentum and conservation of energy, and from logic. Okay, conservation of momentum lets you set up this equation for equal masses. Conservation of energy lets you set up this equation for equal masses. Mathematics or algebra or arithmetic or whatever gives you this equation which tells you that one of these has to be zero and just familiarity with, with what happens in our world tells you which one it is and you immediately solve and you find that it moves off. What velocity will it move off with? Okay, so now we know that this is zero. No. Uh, the, which v1. one? The one, v1 the, tag. V1 is zero. So what does that, what does that mean now? V1 square initial is equal to V2 square afterwards. How much is V2 prime? It's equal to V1, right? So they have the same velocity. So in other words, this one moves at a certain velocity, hits this one, this one then moves off with that velocity. Which So in other words, this one moves at a certain velocity, hits this one, this one then moves off with that velocity. When which is the same. Pardon me? When both masses, when both masses are the same. 